Hi, Dr. Tidell again. By this point, you should have already watched a video that was an introductory video of AP120. And perhaps you have had time, if not, you should do this, to watch the introductory video for Canvas, um, where I walk you through how we organize the course and where you can find all the materials you need to succeed in the course. Uh, there also is a video for you to watch that, that walks you through the steps of how to get onto McGraw-Hill Connect so that you can get going on your homework um, and your lab assignments. And remember that those are mandatory, particularly for these first two weeks. You don't want to get dropped. Um, and I also have uh, given you a video about how to get onto use Proctorio for your exams and quizzes. So after all of that, how about if we get going talking about anatomy and physiology? Anatomy and physiology, when people think about it, we mostly think about anatomy like arms and legs and hearts and lungs. Um, and that's true. And we will be talking about those things. But the truth is, in order to understand how life works, you really have to start by understanding how chemistry works. So when we're talking about the levels of organization, uh, this is really conceptually one of the paradigms that physiologists use to understanding human life. Yes, well, ultimately we will get up to the place where we're talking about um, where we're talking about humans, right? But before we do that, we need to be thinking about the smaller subparticles. This is gonna be one of uh, your questions on exam one, so pay attention. So we're going to start with beginning with the atoms, right? An atom is the smallest unit of matter that retains the properties of an element. Uh, it's the smallest unit of a chemical. And actually you will be learning the, the names and the functions of some subatomic particle. So we're talking about the essence of matter. That's going to be our first level of organization. Now, atoms get put together with other atoms to create uh, molecules. Let me put on my laser pointer here, molecules. Anytime two or more atoms are stuck together uh, by a covalent bond, we have got something called a molecule. So some of the simplest molecules might be something like oxygen. The oxygen that is around you, they're not technically oxygen atoms, technically they're oxygen molecules because here on planet Earth, oxygen likes to bind to other oxygens. And so we've got a very simple molecule. Water is another simple molecule. A water molecule is made out of an atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen, making these Mickey Mouse looking uh, molecules. So those are molecules. Now, uh, the molecules of life are much more complicated than these very simple molecules. The molecules of life are often called macromolecules, and they are made out of many atoms not just three, like in a water molecule, but many, many atoms, sometimes millions of atoms, put together to make really, really large uh, structures, things, substances, right? So a macromolecule, this is a teeny, tiny little piece of DNA. And every one of these red spheres is a hydrogen. Um, every one of the yellow ones is and oxygen, uh, these blue ones I think are phosphates. So here we have got um, lots and lots of atoms and this is a teeny part of, of a molecule of DNA. DNA is made out of millions of atoms. One of the things that I will probably tell you a few times as we're talking about chemistry is it is very useful for you to stretch your mind to think about things like atoms and molecules as being tangible three-dimensional things that are as three-dimensional and as real as the chair that you're sitting on. They're just way too small for us to see, even with uh, the strongest light microscope, but they are real. And particularly the molecules of life, like proteins, they actually are like tiny, 
machines, right? So macromolecules. Now, we get bigger than that. We started off with atoms. Atoms get put together to make molecules. Molecules get put together to make macromolecules. Macromolecules, billions of them, get put together to make things called cells. And a cell is the basic unit of life, okay? Everything that biologists believe is truly alive is made out of cells. Yeah, let's not talk about viruses today, okay? Now, we will be talking about a typical human cell in a little while, and cells have got internal structure that, uh, that is divided up into things called organelles. Just like the human body has got an organ, organs inside of it, cells have got organelles inside of them. This orange cell is a human white blood cell, and those green cells, those are little tiny bacterial cells. Now, if we take cells and we put them together, we can organize them, and now we are talking about anatomy, into tissues. Tissues are groups of cells that function together, and we've got a couple of examples here. We will have an entire lecture about tissues. This tissue is hyaline cartilage. You know the cartilage that's in your knee? That is what it looks like through a microscope. And cartilage is an example of a tissue. This is skeletal muscle through the microscope, this image on the right. And uh, skeletal muscle is another example of a tissue. So atoms get put together into molecules, molecules into macromolecules, macromolecules make up cells, Cells get put together into tissues. Tissues get organized together in anatomy in organs. Here's an example of a heart. A heart is an organ, not a tissue. Why? Because every individual heart is made out of several tissues. It is made up of nerve tissue, connective tissue, cardiac muscle tissue, oh, and epithelial tissue. So it is considered an organ. And organs are grouped together into what are called organ systems. Organ systems are groups of organs that function together. For example, this is a, a demonstration of the cardiovascular system. The cardiovascular system is made out of these organs, the heart, arteries, veins, capillaries, and blood. All of that is part of the cardiovascular system. Those are uh, tissues and organs in the cardiovascular system. And that system has got a job to do. What is its job? The cardiovascular system is the most important transportation system in the human body. Another organ system is the nervous system. The nervous system, brain, spinal cord, peripheral nerves, autonomic nerves, these guys all work together they're all part of the nervous system, and the nervous system is, is a very important communication system of the human body. Your first lab, you will learn lots of organs and organ systems along with anatomical terminology. And then we've got, finally, an organism. Uh, this is one of my little cats, Gidget. She's, she's sick right now. I don't know if she's gonna make it, but a good example of an organism, humans are an example of an organism. Now, learn these because in your very first exam, this will be one of the questions, what are the levels of organization? Make sure you can get them in order. Um, starting at the top, organisms get divided up into organ systems like the cardiovascular system, nervous system, respiratory system. Inside of organ systems, there are organs like the heart, the brain, the lung, the kidney. Organs are made out of tissues. Tissues are made out of cells. Cells are made out of macromolecules, which are made out of molecules, which are made out of atoms. All righty. So we will start here at the beginning of our next lecture.